At the end of this, you're going to walk out and uh, be telling everyone silently in your head, close your mouth, close your mouth, close your mouth. Even as you walk through the airport leaving town, you will be telling people to close their mouth because you suddenly notice how many people actually have their mouth open when they should have it closed. Um, with this information today, you will have a bit of an understanding about the value of nasal breathing. You'll identify some problems associated with mouth breathing, and you'll see how we can use the nasal, uh, the clear nasal spray to help enhance nasal breathing. Anyone in your family a mouth breather? This is my family. Can you tell which one I am? The one on the far right. But if you look closely at my older brother, Tim, who thought he was Elvis, he is a typical mouth breather. Flaccid lips, mouth open. You can see the sunken area under his eyes where it hasn't developed properly. And you see, sort of, you can tell the slump in his shoulders, which happens when you br breathe through your mouth. So what is mouth breathing? People are always depicted as being a bit stupid or ignorant if they breathe through their mouths. And if you actually look at special ed classes, the majority of kids in special ed are breathing through their mouths. There's really something to that, and there is a reason why mouth breathers don't look as smart as other people. And we'll go through all of these, but just looking at the fact that when you breathe through your nose, you get more oxygen to your brain and your muscles, and that leads to better brain development in children. Children who breathe through their mouths do not have the same brain development that kids do who breathe through their nose, primarily because they're getting 18% more oxygen to the brain, and they are receiving regenerative sleep, not a sleep level that doesn't regenerate. So we'll look at those, but let's set the stage first with why we see so much mouth breathing. If you look at the marketing, it promotes lips apart. You see it with lip gloss advertisements. You always see the models with their mouths open, and if you look closely at some of the popular movie posters, you'll see their mouth is open. You'll see it with models. They are told when they're photographed to wet, lick their lips and open their mouths just slightly as though they were going to kiss someone. So people have their mouths open all the time. It is thought in the media that this is sexy. But true mouth breathing is not so sexy when you look at those flaccid lips and inflamed gingiva. It's not a new problem. They've been selling straps to pull that chin up since the 1920s. Um, even uh, a little later, they realized that they needed to get people to close their mouths because they were ending up in an early grave if they were mouth breathers. Today, we know that that links directly to sleep apnea. So there's more to being a mouth breather than just looking ignorant and having inflamed anterior gingiva. Still today, lots of chin straps on the market, still trying to get people to close their mouths. So why do we breathe? We breathe, of course, to take in oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. And you're sitting there breathing now, hopefully breathing with your belly. We don't want to see any shoulders going up and down. We want that just a slow belly breath. You aren't, shouldn't hear the person next to you breathing, and you shouldn't know when you're going to take that next breath. It's triggered subconsciously, and it's um, triggered by a chemical change in the pH of the blood. We absorb our oxygen actually on the exhale. We don't absorb it on the inhale. And the nostrils are smaller, making those inhale and exhales slower, and it builds up that back pressure in the lungs on the exhale, which slows the release of oxygen, which gives more time for the CO2 to remain in the lungs to allow the oxygen to be released from the hemoglobin. CO2 has a critical role in breathing, almost more important than oxygen. It facilitates the release of that oxygen from the hemoglobin. It triggers our breathing pattern and the CO2 maintains the pH that we need in our blood, and the CO2 will help prevent smooth muscle spasms. So any of you runners out there, bicyclers who exercise with your mouth open, have you ever experienced muscle cramping? It comes from not keeping that CO2 in your body long enough, and you get those smooth muscle cramps. Oxygen absorption is increased with the release of nitric oxide in the nasal passages when you inhale through the nose. So with that increase in nitric oxide with nasal inhalation, we have an increase in the oxygen exchange efficiency. And that is what will increase the level of oxygen in your blood by 18%. 
This then improves oxygen absorption through the lungs. So when you breathe through your nose, you're getting 18% more oxygen to your brain and your muscles. That's an important point to remember, 18% more just by closing your mouth. Of course, the nose is important for filtration. And just a minor fact on this to remember, nose breathing, when you inhale dust mites, those will be removed from your body in 15 minutes. But if you're mouth breathing, it's going to take 60 to 120 days to get the dust mites out of your system. Let me repeat that. 15 minutes if you're nose breathing, 60 to 120 days if you're mouth breathing. So filtration is important. Each nostril, this is a party trick you can use. Each nostril functions independently and synergistically, and it switches. Try it right now. Put a finger on the side of your nose, breathe in on the other nostril, switch. Can you tell which nostril is stronger, which is more dominant? We'll try this a little later. Try it a few times during the day, and you will see that that will automatically switch. So just to summarize a huge topic of the physiology of breathing, nose breathing is going to bring the ideal of exchange between carbon dioxide and oxygen. That ideal exchange will maintain the pH of your blood, and nose breathing will produce the nitric oxide in the nasal passages, which increases the oxygen levels absorbed. Mouth breathing, on the other hand, expels that CO2 too quickly. Mouth breathing will decrease that, CO, that oxygen absorption, and mouth breathing will lead to a drop in the pH of the blood, which triggers you to take another breath, which leads to hyperventilation. Signs of mouth breathing. Anybody wonder if they're a mouth breather? Do you ever feel excessive saliva, feel drooling, feel that you've awakened in the night drooling? Do you ever wake up with a dry throat? Do you need a glass of water by the bed? That means you're a mouth breather. Do you chew with your mouth open? Do you, How many have kids who have been trying to get those kids to ch stop chewing with their mouth open? They're chewing with their mouth open because they breathe through their mouth. And people who lick their lips and are addicted to chapstick and lip coating are mouth breathers because that's why their lips dry out. The only time our mouth should really be open is when you're talking, when you're smiling, when you're biting into your food, not chewing. When you're kissing, you can have your mouth open, and when you do oral hygiene. All other times, your mouth should be closed. But what switches someone from nose breathing, which is normal, to breathing through the mouth? It's usually a cold, it's an allergy, it's asthma. Something stuffs up the nose and the person switches, but then what happens is mouth breathing actually triggers more nasal congestion and that continues the pattern. So what the way that works is that there are two centers in the brain for breathing. One recognizes if you're exhaling through your nose or your mouth, the other doesn't. The other that says, gosh, they're exhaling too quickly. If they're mouth breathing, that CO2 is leaving the body too quickly. The brain says they're exhaling too quickly, and that should be through the nose. So let's plug the nose up to slow down that exhale. Looking at it more graphically, the mouth breathing will then trigger the brain to send signals to let the goblet cells produce more mucus that will actually cause more congestion, and people who begin with a bit of congestion will continue if they mouth breathe. The more you mouth breathe, the more you will be congested. So looking at the many problems that are associated with mouth breathing, we'll run through a few of these. Dry mouth we've talked about before and how xylitol helps that so much. We need that saliva. It's a valuable commodity in the mouth that does a lot to protect and to prevent disease in the mouth. It also protects us from bad breath, which is something that mouth breathers have a bit more of. Also, the tonsils become very dry, inflamed, and infected with mouth breathing, and we begin to see those tonsils enlarge, getting even larger, and when they touch, they're considered kissing tonsils. So closing that mouth helps to reduce that inflammation, get the saliva back, coating those tonsils, and get the person into a level of homeostasis within the mouth. Something else we see with mouth breathing is snoring. Anyone married to this person? Open mouth snoring. The problem with snoring is with the mouth open, the tongue, which should be resting on the roof of the mouth, falls back into the throat against the soft palate, 
and compromises closing the airway. If the tongue rests on the roof of the mouth, it's not resting, it's being held up there actively. The tongue on the roof of the mouth, lips closed, that keeps the airway open, critical to preventing um, snoring and sleep apnea. Even kids snore and they shouldn't. Some people think it's so cute when the kids are snoring, but even children should be, a, a, with your children, be especially aware of whether their mouth is open when they go to sleep. Big study recently reported by Karen Bonick is that sleep disordered breathing, which was measured as mouth breathing, reflects later in the behavior of the children. Kids with bad behavior are related to mouth breathing, and what that means is they are not getting regenerative sleep, they are sleep deprived. This is what kids look like. It's a long face syndrome. Um, you can see the flattened areas the, under the eyes, the shortened upper lip, the mouth open, tongue coming forward, and a vacant look in their face. These kids are receiving 18% less oxygen to their brain than kids who are breathing through their nose. Especially when they're sleeping, they're not getting regenerative sleep. With these sleep disturbances, it has been suggested by um, Dr. Shelton, who is the director of the largest children's sleep apnea center in the country in Chicago. He has said there is no such thing as ADHD. And from his perspective, I think he's probably right. Probably 80% of kids diagnosed with sleep apnea are actually sleep deprived. And the reason they are hyperactive, getting up, moving, can't sit still, uh, outbursts during school, is they are trying to stay awake. That is what the hyperactivity is. They are so sleep deprived that they, and kids don't like to slip, fall asleep, they are trying to stay awake by moving themselves, talking, and what other people perceive as disruptive behavior. So ADHD is simply kids trying to keep themselves awake. This leads to uh, kids not paying attention in school, always tired, irritable, behavior problems, and then what people want to do is throw drugs at this. But the biggest problem we have is that these kids do not have good brain development. And they're be measuring this now in kids who are having trouble reading. They are not actually developing their brain at the same level kids, as kids who breathe through their nose. Um, a big problem with mouth breathing is the tongue drops down and forward. And that leads to open mouth breathing. If your tongue is resting on the roof of your mouth where it should, you cannot breathe through your mouth. Try that now. Put your tongue to the roof of your mouth like it's stuck with peanut butter. Open your mouth and try to breathe. You cannot breathe through your mouth. So the real problem is the tongue drops down and forward. And this then changes a whole chain of reaction in the development of the jaw and the face. Tongue drops down and forward, typical shape of that space, tongue coming forward. The tongue needs to be in the roof of the mouth to help the palate develop. It triggers the stem cells in the area to grow the palate to exactly the right size to fit the teeth. If the tongue isn't resting there, the, pal the palate is squashed in by the cheek muscles, and we get the narrow, high vaulted palate. We get narrower and closer, and you can see there's no way a tongue would have been resting in there. Orthodontists then try many gymnastics and appliances to try to force that jaw to grow, but had that tongue been in the palate as the child was growing, the palate would have grown normally. Here is an example of what happens when that tongue drops down and forward. We see this cute little six-year-old girl who is a mouth breather on your left. Give her a few more years and look what happens to the facial structure. You can see under the eyes how it's flattened, how the nose has elongated. Look how much longer the chin is. She has developed long face syndrome. And these are permanent changes, permanent developmental changes that were directly influenced by the tongue not being in the roof of the mouth, the child switching from nose breathing to mouth breathing. This is a patient of Dr. Mews in the UK, and um, this 10-year-old boy received, um, he was a nose breather, good-looking young guy, received a gerbil for his 10th birthday. They kept the gerbil in his bedroom, and he was allergic to the gerbil. Switched from nose breathing to mouth breathing, and in just a few years, look what happened to the shape of his face. Look how it's flattened under the eyes. Look at the recessive chin when 
When mouth breathers chew and try to swallow, it's considered almost a reverse swallow. They're actually using the muscles in their chin to swallow, which pulls back constantly during swallowing. And you see then the jaw actually looking as though there had been headgear on, pulling that chin back. It changes the development of the jaw simply by switching from nose breathing to mouth breathing. Sisters, you can see here the cute little seven-year-old on your left who is a nose breather. Samantha, who's just a bit older, is a mouth breather. And as they grow up, you can see a big difference in the look of those faces. Samantha now has that long face syndrome. Look how much longer her chin is. Look how flat it is under her eyes, the way her nose is elongated. Look at her lips. She's having to tense those muscles to hold her lips together because she never has her mouth closed. So her lips are never together. And it's an active, ac active exercise to try to get her to close her mouth. But you can see the difference in, in siblings, one a nose breather and one a mouth breather. The typical side view is you can see how far that chin is pushed back, shortened upper lip, mouth open, and often flaccid lips like my brother had. You can see here the posture that will happen. Try this yourself. Put your tongue to the roof of your mouth. Nice sit up straight, tongue to the roof of your mouth, and then all of a sudden open your mouth and drop your tongue down. You can almost feel simply taking that tongue off the roof of the mouth will pull your shoulders forward, and you can see how kids end up in this slumped posture, then trying again to open their airway by gymnastics of movement. Anyone here feel fatigue in the afternoon? Anyone know family members who are tired who go for the chocolate or the coffee at 3 p.m.? These are people who are mouth breathers who have not been getting regenerative sleep. I know that because I discovered I was a mouth breather, especially after a bout of bronchitis, which switched me from nose breathing to mouth breathing. And from that time, I kept water by the side of my bed always waking up with a dry throat, not knowing why, always having colds, always having throat infections. Once I realized by going through myofunctional therapy and buteco breathing, I realized I was the one who had the problem. I did the work to switch from mouth breathing to nose breathing, and now with xylitol in the picture as well, I haven't had a cold or the flu in ages, and never need water by the bed because I actually sleep through the night comfortably and in the past, I bought three different mattresses, thinking it was the mattress that kept me from sleeping, and it was the mattress that kept me from getting a good night's sleep, when in fact, all I had to do was put a piece of tape on my mouth when I went to bed to make sure that I switched from mouth to nose breathing. Changes how you feel in the afternoon. Chewing with the mouth open is a natural consequence of mouth breathing and people who always take a drink with every bite of food. They're trying to get that food down because they aren't swallowing properly. When you properly swallow, you chew. The food creates a bolus on the tongue. The tip of the tongue goes to the roof of the mouth. The food goes over the back of the tongue and down the throat. When you're chewing with your mouth open, the food goes off the side of the tongue and doesn't actually, um, isn't actually swallowed properly, so the fluid is needed to help get that food down, all because of mouth breathing. So you can see there are a lot of problems associated with mouth breathing, and we are in fact meant to be nose breathers. And there are many benefits that you experience with nose breathing. We've talked about the oxygen, the regenerative level of sleep, important is the brain development in children, having adequate saliva, which then leads to fresher breath, optimal palatal development, facial structure development, Increased stamina and in endurance, I mentioned this to you if you're an athlete and you breathe through with your mouth, many athletes think it's you get more oxygen when you breathe through your mouth. That is not true. I love this picture of our gold medal winner, Jackie joyner Kersey. Look at those lips. Closed. She is breathing through her nose. And look at the Russian next to her with her mouth open. The Russian didn't win. That tells you everything about nose breathing. Many athletes and many professional teams now have breathing coaches to train them to train with their mouth closed. They build endurance and better muscle memory and actually are much stronger in the end. So the teams that close their mouth are becoming much more successful. Also, we will see lower pulse rate and stress reduction when you breathe through your nose because you have to take slower breaths than the hyperventilating through the mouth. So 
people who may be plugged up and being in this atmosphere in a hotel, you may find that you are a bit plugged up. It's a quick fix to unplug your nose. And we can all try this so that you know how to do it. You're go I'll run through it first and then we can do it. I'm going to have you close your mouth and put your finger over your lips. I'm going to have you take a small breath in, small breath out, pinch your nose, and then I want you to move your head around, count in your head, see how high you can get. So let's try, and when you need to take a breath, keep that finger on your lips and take that breath through your nose. So close your mouth, lips over your, finger over your lips, small breath in through your nose, small breath out, hold your nose, bob your head. Bobbing the head, moving it around will increase the circulation to the area. Keep moving, see how long you can count. If you, when you're ready to take a breath, keep that finger on your lips and breathe through your nose. Anybody feel a little less congested? And you can repeat this up to six times, especially when you're very congested. You keep doing this. You unplug the nose this way. Very quick, very easy. Kids love doing this exercise, and it's very easy to get kids unplugged. Once you get it unplugged, you want to keep it unplugged and keep it clean. And that's where the clear nasal spray is going to be so helpful to be used on a daily basis to prevent infection and to keep the nose open. If you wash your hands, wash your nose. And to prevent, um, with otitis media, as been mentioned before, it needs to be used five times a day. Using it morning and evening is a preventive that all of us should do to enhance our nasal breathing. Taking from Dr. Lon Jones, look at your toes and squirt your nose. Paper tape is another option to help you close that mouth. I have the tape if anyone wants it, and I want you to remember this is not child abuse. And it's a good thing to be done during the day to get kids used to it, but it's a great way. Kids actually love the taping. Uh, but don't use duct tape. It is not indicated. It needs to be micropore paper tape that can be torn off very easily when needed. So we've covered this information. I hope you feel a bit better understanding of the value of nose breathing, that you can identify some problems now. You can see some long face syndrome kids, and that you can improve your own nasal breathing with a clear nasal spray. To wrap it up, here's a quick little video to remind you of what of this. Too many people betray their intellectual deficiencies simply by the way they breathe. Breathing through an open mouth betrays an unawareness of one's own dorkiness. An intelligent person realizes that nose breathing not only looks better, but air conditioning and filtration is best achieved via the nostrils. You'd expect to see fly catching in a three-year-old, but you should have grown out of it by adulthood. Breathing through your nose is possible. It's better for you and it's less grating for your onlookers. So as you go out, telling in your mind, everyone you see at airports and shopping malls to close their mouth, remember the value of nasal breathing. Think about it yourself with that tongue up on the roof of the mouth and keep breathing through your nose. I have a few books in the back if you'd like. This is from another topic, but a gift to you from me for this presentation. Thank you very much, and breathe through your nose. <laughs>